this time on Ding Dong Games. Now that I've discussed Pokemon Nameless Fire Red, it's time I showcase the Nuzlocke challenge on Expert Mode. This is not easy. However, I've discovered a few loopholes for the early game. This time, how far will I make it? I made an in-depth video analysis on the brilliant ROM hack Pokemon Nameless Fire Red, a very well made game. In that video I explained everything you need to know about that game so you can watch that if you want a detailed analysis but in short, this game has so many new features added to the base Fire Red, along with a new difficulty mode. The hardest difficulty expert mode is not for the faint of heart. The gym leaders are all level scaled with powerful Pokemon, movesets and EV training. This will not be easy. However, I have discovered some tricks to help you cheese your way through parts of this game, you can use them too. Now, before I start the extreme nuzlocke on expert mode, I've got an announcement to make. This might be the final can you beat video on my channel. At least for some time is, I want to change my channel's focus going forward. I'll make another video discussing this in more detail about my future plans to make more interesting content instead of the usual can you beat videos. So with that out of the way, let's begin the Nuzlocke. So the expert lock begins and I choose chest spin as my starter as I think that's the best one. Its defensive nature and grass typing is good early game and later on it could do some really nice stalling shenanigans. This one has a decent nature in IVs, its attack is high but its defences are not so good unfortunately. Lel. Cesspin. <laughs> Beat Fennekin easily and set off. Now that I've got the Pokeballs it's time to start the Nuzlocke. Oh yeah, make sure that you do not turn on single encounter claws until you actually get their Pokeballs, otherwise the first route will be cancelled as you'll have technically already had an encounter there. I catch Bunnelby who is pretty bad without huge power unfortunately. However, the Cheek Pouch ability is actually pretty good for getting good berries early game, it's not so bad. Starly can be pretty useful due to having Growl and Intimidate when evolved which can be used against Brock, that is very important in this Nuzlocke. In the forest I catch a slack off, which will be very important for the first few badges, you'll see. Then the next Pokemon I catch after this is, yes, a Nidoran. But unfortunately it had the rivalry ability, though. And while it had the brave nature, its attacking IVs ended up being completely terrible, this is not good. So grind, grind and more grinding. Thank god for the gen 6 EXP share. Beat Blue easily enough since I over level him. More grinding as some of my Pokemon start evolving. I need to prepare for Brock now, and I will need a strategy for him. Now here there's a hidden Grotto where you can find a Lillipup, which would have been very helpful especially if it gets Intimidate. I do consider hidden Grotos to be separate areas, but stupid me, I forgot to turn off the single encounter clause so the game did not let me catch it. Damn it, I would have really liked that. Well at least I caught the search kit from the hidden Grotto in the forest so... I've got that, though it won't be that helpful. But now that I've got all the available Pokemon, I need to prepare my strategy for Brock and this is not going to be fun. I had to grind. Basically I need Vigorov to beat Brock, as the rest of my team isn't that great. The fact that Nidorina has rivalry is a big problem. But finally after about an hour of grinding I finish, then I go to challenge Brock and here I showcase one of the possible strategies that you can use to beat him. This was still hard and RNG still meant a lot in this battle, even with the best strategies you can still get unlucky and downright lose, that's insane for the first gym. Now here I use my ace pokemon to start off the battle against Brock. This was such a pain but so worth it to get Vigoro for my team. I used the awesome combo of Yawn and Slackoff to stall it out, it had the Lumberry which was annoying, but after putting it to sleep again, Cesspin comes in and uses Leech Seed purely to stall out the Rog and Roller. Now I took some time going back and forth and took a lot of damage in a way, but eventually I beat Rog and Roll with Nidorina in play, which is exactly what I wanted. This is because Brock always sends in a Moron X, so I need Nidorina in here to counter it. Switching in Nidorina into this is risky as it uses Thunder Wave and Ancient Power, and you do not want to risk that, ideally. Weirdly enough, the AI screwed itself over by trying to heal the Amora instead of just attacking again. See, a critical hit or an Ancient Power boost, and I would have been completely screwed straight away, but but I'm not complaining. And god this Tyron is a huge threat and this got really dicey, but what happened was kind of lucky in a weird way. 
a dragon tailed out my Nidorina into Staravia, who used Growl and Intimidate to weaken it significantly. Now it's way weaker and for some reason the Tyrant just did not use Home Claws again, so that's good. But now Vigoroth can wall it out easily enough and it really pays off as it stalls it out to win with Yawn and Slack Off and attacks it with Faint Attack. This did get really tense but I won in the end, with no casualties, nice. This is just one of the many ways you can beat Brock, but either way this was still not easy to do at all. Ok so after that I buy Magikarp, it's always a shiny and it always gets a Moxie ability which I guess is good and bad at the same time. To be honest, Moxie can be downright broken at times. Catch a Noivern and Puchena which weren't needed. The weird thing is that I'm already at the next level cap. Honestly the normal trainers really aren't that, aren't that hard due to how the EXP share works, but at least it's easy sailing until Cerulean City. I catch a Smogon bird thing. This ends up being really good later on, even without Gale Wings, so definitely catch it, it's pretty easy to do so. I do have the battle against Revival, but this time he's not hard. He only becomes a challenge in the mid to late game. It should be noted that he does not scale their level, so you can trivialize him simply by raising the level limit. I made sure to use Thief on his ace Pokemon int. Oh nice, I stole some berry juice, that can be useful. I also catch a Rouse after the bridge which is very good and you will see later on. Gardevoir is really powerful if used in a certain way. I am scared of Misty's team so I decided to clear out everything first just to gain some levels and to maybe come up with some new strategies. I gain some more levels and finally have my Gyarados. Oh baby. I also battled Blue again but because I raised the level cap significantly he is no threat. This time Breakscene has Charcoal. Which is mine now. Lel. Finally after a lot of random levelling I go to challenge Misty at level 28 and while her team can be crazy to deal with, I have a strategy to beat her and you too can use this. It's not that hard to do actually unless you have really bad IVs and you're really unlucky. The only thing you need to do is weaken or ideally stop the first shelter, do not knock it out. As it can almost always take it from Gyarados. I don't want my Gyarados to take damage yet. Now that the shelter is sleeping, Gyarados can easily come in and fish it off, then it gets a Moxie boost. This is where the Moxie ability becomes really broken. At this point, one bounce can easily stop Rooper. And I get another attack boost, Jesus Christ. Now Starmie is here, and this could be a massive pain. But in anticipation, I gave my Gyarados a Lumberry to specifically play around it using RNG. As I know that from my Fire Red Omega playthrough that Misty has a Starmie, in that it can easily boost paralysis and confusion, so I'm saying no to that. I one shot it with bite, then get another attack boost, oh my god. Now the final hurdle is a damn Azumarill and this is where things get really funny. It is possible that Azumarill can outspeed Gyarados if it's got bad speed values due to Azumarill's EV training which is pretty crazy by the way, but luckily I've got a jolly nature and really good attack IVs. Well, Bounce will most likely one shot it with a plus 3, obviously. I recommend just using Secret Power instead as missing Bounce is almost game losing and too risky. I'm risk averse and I don't want to take that 15% chance. Just play it safe and use Secret Power. And that right there is how you trample over Misty on Expert Mode. Nice, now moving on now. Now that everything is cleared, I can just go straight to Lieutenant Surge since I've already cleared out the SSN. However, to be safe, I want to make a few alterations to my squad. Gyarados and Staravia aren't optimal. I catch a Rhyhorn and Flip Baby, then I decide to just screw it and go to Lavender Town first, before the third gym, just to get some more booty. Ok, Blue's here again, didn't I just flex on him like not long ago? Time for some more flex. As you can see the new guard fort on my team is putting in so much work as Calamide and Draining Kiss is so strong. Damn he's also got the Zoom and I'm scared of like, Aqua Tail or something. For some reason this one is just way weaker than Misty's one, it probably has less EV values. I'm not complaining though. I'm not risking Cespin to a critical hit so I bring in Nidoqueen in. Look at this! What the hell? This Nidoqueen is awful. Well it is really bulky at least. Be gone. Screw it back to gym number 3. Go flex boy, meme on his team. I activate big brain mode and play around to Salak Berry Electabuzz by predicting the potion use and use Bulldoze instead, lel. Now destroy him. Man this gym is so much easier than the first two. 
I did seem to get easier after Misty for a bit. Going for Giovanni in Erica's gym. Evolve some more Pokemon and catch some more. This Hounder will be useful later on. Yeah, most of the normal trainers were a relative breeze. I decided to add Talonflame to the squad as it's obviously great against Erica. Then I use a Vulpix icon and add it to the squad. I go to challenge Erica first and here my team is really good against her. Honestly, she can be a bit of a threat but at this point, you should have enough options to counter her easily enough. Talonflame is super easy to get and is also very effective here. Remember to bring Lumberries as these grass holes like to use Sleep Powder. Now the fight begins. Look! Lel. Look! Lel. What the hell? Look! Go! Oh. I used Charcoal but probably should have rolled Lumberry instead. But it's fine, as Erica uses a Super Potion at Chief's Gate and gets pummeled by Big Bird Jesus Christ. Don't you hate it when Fly misses? Even at 95% accuracy, I still get anxiety at times over moves missing in boss battles. Hell, another miss and I would have said bye bye to Jesus. And you do have to be very careful of the sauce buck as it could be a really big problem. It sets up sword stance in the sun and I was scared is that chlorophyll. But, oh god. What did I just witness here? Okay, I'll admit the AI is usually optimal but sometimes it's really baffling. Listen up maggots, as this is really important. I noticed that this Tangrove has leftovers, so you're damn right I'm gonna steal it. Gaze it here, biatch. Thank you, now die. Ha, now I got the lefties. I go straight to Giovanni after this, but before that I need to evolve my starter into Cessnaught. The power. Sis. Really enough, Giovanni was not even worth showing, as his Pokemon are not fully evolved. However, he'll be back. Just you wait. Hmm. I'm not allowed to go into Saffron City yet, due to some added plot shenanigans. I guess in a game like this, you want the game to be more linear to prevent the player from randomly going off the beaten path and to make the game more balanced I guess. Now I was so excited to catch a Snorlax, I was basically salivating at the opportunity. However, for some reason the game would not let me catch it at all. Even though I literally have not had any encounters here, what the hell, are you kidding me? I can't reset, but man, this was so unfair. I should have switched off the single encounter clause for this battle, but I was too late. This might be a glitch or something, so you should probably play around that. Oh well, no Snorlax for me. Hello? Goodbye. At least I found a hidden Grotto for Luxio. I caught a Gligar, which sounds amazing, but turns out that I don't think you can actually evolve the Gligar until the post game, which is. Come on man, kind of annoying. I catch nothing of note in the Safari Zone. I allowed one encounter per area but this was a waste. I did find a hidden Grotto for Absol and while this doesn't look like much, this does come in handy, oh baby you will see. What happened next was quite unexpected as I went back to the older areas and fished up some Pokemon. And the ones that I got were really high level, actually above the level cap. Slowbro would be great but annoyingly in this game, to get Slowbro, you have to level up Slowpoke in the bottom floor of a Seafoam Island. Get out with that. Okay, so in the Nuzlocke run before this, I actually lost against Koka here and quit. No joke, Koka is not easy at all, way harder than the other ones. To make things worse, my team is not well suited for him, but I got tired of grinding. Screw it, let's go. First Pokemon was okay. But man, I've got no counter for this skunk tank. It's a special attacking variant, so a Snorlax for instance would have been really good here but I've got no choice but to sacrifice my Staraptor for a safe switch in. Goodbye Jesus. Screw it, let's go Gyarados. It's got a very good attacking IVs and speed IVs also, along with a great nature and... Oh. Oh. Oh my god. This is too much power. Okay, but... What just happened now? Whoa! I didn't even need Dragon Dance. Honestly, I was really paranoid about missing. That's the one thing that I don't like about Gyarados, that his moves aren't 100% accuracy, but Jesus Christ. Okay, time to beat Rival Blue again and... Wow, I'm significantly higher level than him. However, there was a big problem here, as he also had a Gyarados with the exact same set as mine. He also had leftovers too, like mine. It spammed Calmind. Which was big yikes, but mine is stronger, right? Nope. Damn it, one of my best Pokemon, you bitch. 
His Dale Fox was an unexpected threat as it almost gave me another casualty. Losing Gardevoir really sucked, but at least I get given a Lapras with an Assault Vest. Cool. Time to prepare for Giovanni. Damn, I don't like Toxic. You know what? Pee off. Unleash the Kraken, you gimps. Who needs Dragon Dance when Gyarados literally has Dragon Dance built in with his ability, lel? The Gabite puts up a fight but gets beaten by Cessnaught. Man, it kind of reminds me of Wreck Dream from Pokemon Clover, doesn't it? I can kind of see a bit of a resemblance, I don't know why. At this point, the grinding is starting to get a bit tedious and the fact that level scaling is forced for all versus secret battles is kind of annoying for grinding but oh well. Eventually Houndoom replaces Cessnaught for the next gym battle as I go to take on Sabrina, who I was nervous about as at this point I am completely blind at this point, but it's meme time, we don't care. Hmm, Bronzong. Eh, I'll try to set up, hopefully it doesn't deal too much damage. Nice, I one shot it, lel. Rhinoclus. Ha, meme. Jinx. She's pissed off that I'm playing this game instead of Fire Red Omega and wants to stop me. Be gone, fought. Okay, now this I don't like. Goodbye, Miss Mages. I'm sorry I've got no counter. Gyarados can easily Dragon Dance on the heel and one shot it. Oof, it's using Sword Dance. But now, you die. Oh. I'm... I'm... I don't know how to feel about this. Like, on one hand, I am really grateful that Gyarados has carried me until this point, but pissed that I didn't go all the way. I would have undoubtedly swept Sabrina here otherwise, and while I don't like moves with any less than 100% accuracy, missing these moves, it just happens. I guess... I guess I should have just known it and probably used Return or Crunch or something. Slacking also has a Kamikaze of the Glade. Goodbye Super Harambi. Rest in sauce. Oh no, not slow bro, I think I'm screwed. As it starts using Calmine, I can barely touch it. Luckily I get a critical hit and knock myself out so Absol can fish it off. My Lapras fainting was actually a good thing as otherwise I would have probably lost. Phew. Then it simply sucker punches Godfrey to wins. Wow, that was a crazy battle. I was so smug and confident at the start, but then it all went downhill so fast and I seriously thought I was going to lose but somehow I pulled through. Absol is poggers. At this point, I'm in a bit of a pickle against Blaine as I don't have the best mons anymore to handle him. I need some new mons. I get a Tyrant, but damn it's got a modest nature. I wanted Ultimate Conductor Tyranno from Yu-Gi-Oh, but instead got Super Conductor instead. Lame. Because I'm training my weaker Pokemon, there was this battle here where I almost got completely swept, which was not good, but thank god I had no casualties. This was too close. Get a Larvesta, which is Pog, but get my Growlithe knocked out, which is not Pog. Absol also went down to an ominous wind boosted Jellicent, and I once again almost lost this battle, damn it. And oh yeah, I accidentally triggered a double battle, and also lost my Dragalgi afterwards, for god's sake, just. Piss off, seriously. Enough of these shenanigans. After a while, I finally go to challenge Blaine after finishing my grinding. This team does not look good, but man, screw it, I was really tired of grinding. I think I might lose here, but there's only one way to find out. Hmm. Drought Ninetales is always bad to face against, but Houndoom can kind of counter it. I like how the AI uses Flamethrower, then realises what my ability is, then decides not to use that and just goes for Solar Beam instead. Luckily, it can't hurt me too much. But wait! This battle becomes a complete meme once again, as I use Thief and steal some leftovers. Yeah, baby! Now it can barely scratch me. You know what? Talonflame, spam home claws, then sweep. Get Shrek, biatch. The funny thing is I actually had TM Sword Stance but forgot that Talonflame could learn it. Oh well. An easy win. Maybe I can complete the whole Nuzlocke, right? Well... Here's the final battle against Giovanni, and Jesus Christ, this gym is ridiculous. Like, Brock and Misty levels of difficulty spikes. This Hippowdon can be a pain in the ass as it has Toxic so Cessnock can't stall it out. I don't know if I could beat this Rhyferior, so I switched out to Cess, as it's such a good physical wall, but it's got Megahorn and oh my god, it dealt so much damage. What the hell is Life Orbed? Yikes. This is where things go from 100 to 1000 real quick, 
this flipping life orbed EV trained mix attacking Garchomp. I was scared of it using Sword Stance, so I didn't use Protect. But no, Cessna is roasted. Oof. What the hell even is this? Not even my physical wall Slowbro does anything to it. Also, I can't even get TM Ice Beam at this point. It's, you can't get it at the game corner like usual, which is really annoying. Even Talonflame somehow gets outsped. And now, I'm dead. What the hell was that? This gem escalated so quickly. Now, in this game, I should say that I do allow myself to continue the Nuzlocke using the Pokemon in my PC, as the game does reinforce Nuzlocke rules itself. But guess what? Hardly any of these Pokemon can even do anything to Giovanni, even if I do grind them up. Now, I did try to rebuild my team off screen with these Pokemon. I did have a Shelter, which could have used Shell Smash in maybe a Quiver Dancing Volcarona can set up a sweep. And I went out and decided to catch that Kurum with a Master Ball. But I ended up losing half of these Pokemon while grinding due to the level scale nature of the trainer rematches because they always scale with the strongest Pokemon on your team. So you have to face them with a half ass team. And while they're always at the same level as your highest level Pokemon, and also from the looks of it, they are EV trained, which means if anything goes wrong, your strongest Pokemon could easily go down, then all of your weaker ones will fall over like dominoes. I got wiped out again while grinding. Anyways, like besides that, I do want to attempt this Nuzlocke again from scratch. Maybe in a live stream, as I've learned a lot of new strategies and a lot of new things, and I can actually show you them in person. And on a side note, I was really bored making this video. Honestly, I'm getting bored of the whole can you beat genre and want to quit it for more interesting videos instead. So yeah, it is what it is. Can you beat videos have become so stale and pointless and boring to make, which I just can't be bothered with anymore. Anytime I see a thumbnail of another YouTuber's can you beat videos, I just think to myself, why the hell would I want to watch this? Like, who cares, man? I will say also that grinding in Nameless Five Red can become pretty painful late game due to the level scale and nature making it really awkward to do properly with your weaker Pokemon, and because of how hard it is to EV train properly, it's really time consuming. But regardless, I had a lot of fun with this game. I will see you all next time. I would like to do the live stream very soon, and I think I'll play Insurgents and make a video on that. But anyways, this is Ding Dong, signing out.